مشاهدي الكرام اهلا بحضراتكم ومرحبا اسعد الله صباحكم بكل الخير من شرم الشيخ مدينه السلام حيكم هذا بث streaming uh, from inside uh, the uh, from sorry, Sharm el Sheikh Congress Center as uh, we host today the events of annual meetings for uh, Asian Infrastructure Bank Investment Bank. This uh, uh, these important uh, meetings uh, that uh, were chose uh, to hold uh, hold their meetings in Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt. Uh, it is an important, as an important uh, um, significance um, uh, for uh, Egypt. Most important uh, uh, to be held in the most important uh, uh, meetings at uh, levels. Uh, this is an important economic level for the first uh, time to hold their meetings uh, uh, here in Africa. إذا وصل الآن سيد so, President Abdel Fattah Sisi now arrived here in Sharm uh, Sheikh International Congress Center as uh, a start of uh, these uh, meetings as President Sisi attend uh, the events of the meetings that uh, start uh, soon. Uh, we greet you today. I'm here standing inside uh, this uh, hall that uh, will witness these, uh, the, the meetings uh, uh, soon. And President Sisi arrived to Sharm el Sheikh International Congress Center to uh, 
um, preparing to inaugurate these important uh, meetings and uh, the memorial photo were, were taken this uh, venue to be a history written here, economic and developmental history. I was talking before President Sisi's arrival about uh, the importance uh, of uh, uh, directing to Africa from different uh, fields of funds and investments or taking care of Africa for what it has um, uh, real opportunities uh, for Africa itself and for external world. Um, that uh, there is a lot of things that uh, can uh, um, provide it to Africa in uh, developmental and uh, um, fundamental uh, financial uh, framework uh, that is important to talk about uh, and to observe in uh, uh, several multilateral uh, gathering a great uh, uh, number of sectors uh, intervened in a sustainable development and partnership and taking care of infrastructure because the investment in infrastructure is not uh, only investment uh, in means or paths only but uh, it extends to be more than way more than that uh, in different uh, 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 I am pleased uh, to host uh, Dr. Amr Talat, uh, engineer Amr Talat, uh, doctor and minister of uh, uh, telecommunication. Uh, thank you, hello, for this uh, dinner session. Thank you so much. Uh, when we talk about uh, the events of uh, this uh, conference, uh, we say it's an important uh, conference, uh, but uh, what makes it important? And uh, uh, many can be provided uh, to Africa, and among the um, issues that will be tackled to our uh, two teams uh, um, for telecommunication and uh, an access. Uh, for um, communication and infrastructure in uh, telecommunication. As Egypt, we uh, took uh, steps, uh, great steps uh, in uh, infrastructure, and Africa also has to join this field. Please talk about the importance of these two fields. Thank you, um, sir. This uh, theme is very important uh, generally and in regards to the communication and international uh, and information technology is very important and we'll start with the second theme which is digital infrastructure and all African um, countries among uh, which Egypt uh, seek to deepen digital, infra digital infrastructure thanks God uh, during the past years Egypt we um, we uh, made the great steps uh, with worth two billion dollars uh, uh, in uh, uh, land uh, digital infrastructure with uh, uh, we uh, doubled uh, the speed of internet uh, to more stable internet uh, uh, to nine um, doubling the number of participants uh, increased that it reached 70 million uh, uh, participants in stable internet services which make it uh, makes it uh, most uh, uh, a very important utility to practice working to follow up uh, news or even for inter entertaining activities so that's why state has all the state has always to continue uh, enhancing this infrastructure expanded uh, supporting and developing the importance of this uh, theme that these uh, financial important financial in uh, institutions contributing in this meeting can participate uh, with the governments in Africa uh, African countries uh, uh, including Egypt uh, in supporting this uh, infrastructure and uh, more developing and this is the first uh, theme in regards to the second theme uh, also during the past few years Egypt achieved uh, great uh, important uh, pr uh, progress uh, in uh, um, in the field of uh, creating uh, or manufacturing technologies we signed more than uh, four or five signs with international companies to start uh, um, manufacturing cell phones and uh, um, panel computers in Egypt and also uh, this is important uh, field uh, 
um, in parallel with it, that the number of companies that started uh, um, founding and uh, expanding institutions in this field, Egypt has become an effective uh, uh, player in uh, its region. That's why we can uh, participate in international gatherings to um, increase our strength and plans in the field of designing and electronic manufacturing. Do, um, for how long uh, we can uh, expect a leap uh, in on at Egypt uh, level? Where, uh, and I'm asking the telecommunication minister and also. Uh, uh, we're talking about an uh, Egyptian cell phone. We have a, an attempt before. Uh, I think now technology has um, uh, been way more sophisticated and we have different horizons. Uh, for um, During how long? Uh, let's uh, um, clarify this. So there is no country manufacturing a electronic uh, device from A to Z, but we have to complement uh, um, uh, complement uh, electronics between uh, countries, uh, manufacturing screens or cell phones, uh, and uh, countries uh, can uh, that uh, not only gathering but also designing uh, panels uh, and uh, manufacturing. Uh, then we overpassed uh, uh, co gathering uh, devices, but we um, are talking about designing uh, that uh, does not is not less than 45 percent, which is a very good amount uh, percentage. And this phase, uh, we cannot manufacture device 100 percent. We cannot imagine that a device uh, a country can manufacture 100 percent devices. Not even China. Even China. Uh, import um, devices uh, from other countries, eat, uh, China design uh, country uh, devices and then uh, they um, manufacture it in other countries. So we are uh, co focusing on tax uh, added uh, value. We are talking about that uh, added value that uh, is not less than 40 to 45 percent, and this is a condition we are keen on uh, being held in every um, agreement. Some of the companies started uh, already and uh, that have signed a memorandum uh, of understanding and started to import uh, devices, machines of manufacturing and uh, uh, production lines. Thank you for your time and all the best in this conference. Thank you so much. Um, so this is one of the sect important sectors, uh, but there is also other sectors, uh, uh, communication sector, there's also uh, other sectors intervene in uh, sustainable development and, and infrastructure. Two words in a great uh, key words. I will talk about uh, more and more sectors and technology used in other sectors after a while.
The beginning of, the, of these meetings, the annual meetings um, of AIIB, I was talking uh, uh, previously with uh, the Minister of Telecommunication, one of uh, the important uh, sectors tackled in this uh, meeting, and there are other uh, sectors uh, in infrastructure as well. It's not only about uh, services and paths uh, in different uh, countries, but they are in, um, intervened uh, with other uh, sectors. Uh, uh, also, we have the health sector because uh, human being is uh, the aim of uh, developing from developing infrastructure uh, greatly and uh, Turkey is talking about this is, uh, go is ongoing and maybe uh, we will be with you after a few seconds. عفوا مشاهدينا الكرام الان يسعدني ويشرفني ان انا التقي مع Uh, the uh, events of these meetings today, of this conference today, how can you find it uh, beneficial for Egypt and Africa, which is being held for the first time uh, here? Uh, good morning. This is an important uh, meeting. Uh, Egypt, maybe Egypt's uh, Vision 2030. Um, and uh, the plan, uh, the uh, reform, economic uh, for, uh, reform uh, plan. One of the most uh, important uh, uh, axes of it is uh, um, developing information infrastructure uh, with, uh, that is being the, the uh, contemporary language in communication. So having this a, uh, AIB uh, gathering is a very important uh, one, uh, reiterating the role that Egypt plays during the last uh, period in, different, um, in developing different fields as uh, building uh, uh, many cities. We're talking about 24 new cities to uh, have uh, increased uh, population and also to provide uh, um, good standards uh, for living. Also, we have uh, a decent uh, life uh, initiative or Haya Kariba initiative that provide good services in rural areas. So in this uh, period, this period has been uh, an extraordinary because it, uh, all the word uh, passed by uh, 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 many crises from COVID to um, uh, Russia, uh, Ukraine uh, a crisis. We had to, we had to communicate with multilateral institutions to share our experiences in order to be able to know how to overcome these uh, challenges. Uh, this uh, one of the miss, miss, uh, minister, one of the. Uh, Important uh, issues tackled here is infrastructure and investment in the infrastructure is Im important as countries are not uh, do not uh, develop. Uh, but uh, by this, uh, actually, uh, during the last few years, we invested greatly in an infrastructure. Maybe the period was extraordinary uh, that uh, we. Um, overpassed uh, in security and economic instability so we needed the state uh, in, uh, to intervention to intervene uh, greatly to upgrade infrastructure the the um, the uh, construction uh, plan um, uh, focuses on the private sector, which is enhances uh, the outcomes of the person. So we're talking about uh, a great uh, projects with private sectors, whether transportation or investment in energy. So we are talking about uh, a management or even fundamental, both of them together, uh, a management uh, uh, fundamental. We have a... Um, a host of uh, projects uh, uh, led by private sector and we have an investment uh, uh, intervened uh, uh, investment with uh, the country and other projects uh, facilitated uh, by the state so we're talking about uh, uh, private sector operating about more than 85 percent uh, 
uh, of employees in Egypt. So it has the fundamental role after preparing infrastructure to invest in. So there is an idea to support infrastructure in, uh, infrastructure in Egypt that, that uh, President Sisi talked about more than once. The percentage, I was surprised, which is 85% there is the direction to support uh, um, to support the private sector nationally. Of course, uh, this is our uh, main uh, partnership in development, and uh, the country's uh, the country's role is. Uh, um, is supervising and developing and supporting. So we have a, a, a group of intensives provided to private sector to facilitate investments. The uh, Supreme Council of Investment uh, um, had led, uh, had facilitated the group of incentives, incentives, and we also have the law of partnership and uh, sovereign, uh, Egyptian sovereign fund that uh, uh, provide uh, great, uh, various opportunities for private sector. Thank you, uh, Ms. President, for having me with you, having uh, being with me. Uh, many sectors, as I, sp as I told you, and uh, we are moving from a sector to another. Uh, I'm pleased to uh, host uh, Dr. Wania, uh, Minister of Cooperation and uh, International Investment. Uh, Ms. President, we're saying that these important uh, events are very important that can provide uh, for Egypt or African content um, a, a lot. Uh, but uh, in Egypt, uh, we are a promising partnership. We prepared the infrastructure. Uh, so the idea of uh, investment in this regard, uh, how can it be helpful? First of all, uh, the AIIB is, uh, was uh, founded in 2015. And uh, the uh, whole idea of establishing this bank to be an alternative Britain with institutions or um, or, uh, or a World Bank, uh, Egypt was one of uh, the first contributors. And as uh, uh, international cooperation ministry, we are the portfolio of um, with with the portfolio of uh, Egypt uh, investments. Uh, so we are working on concessional uh, funds. Uh, this uh, bank worked with us on uh, a national projects uh, and projects that uh, contributed in uh, supporting private sector. So uh, the the bank worked in Ban in 2015, which is considered one of the most important contributors in uh, uh, contributions in uh, supporting investments in Egypt. Uh, as we are talking about supporting private sector to uh, to help uh, to transform uh, Egypt to use uh, solar energy, and also have it uh, have the bank with us uh, in. Uh, uh, sustainable uh, transformation, which is another point uh, with, on our background, our capability to mobilize uh, uh, several institutions. So this bank worked with the uh, Central World Bank and uh, um, and the uh, and other banks, the other banks to uh, to work on it. So. We, as a state, uh, were able to uh, provide more than one bank to work on one project, which is a very uh, great uh, opportunity for investments. In the uh, upcoming period, we have lots of projects with them. They are uh, keen on uh, a NWFI national platform, and they are in involved in uh, funding many projects within it. Uh, uh, Related to water and water and energy, and in the uh, upcoming period, we'll find the international fund uh, um, institutions and banks that uh, provide consensual uh, funds. Uh, will focus with private sector as well. So, Dr. Ronia, investments uh, in different uh, sectors. I have to talk about. Uh, as talking with you, I have to ask you about. Uh, uh, when uh, uh, where we where where we at uh, in investment? So our role in providing funds to support private sector, whether it's Egyptian or uh, foreign private sector. I will talk. I will uh, as an example, exotic uh, project in Alexandria to project uh, to uh, produce uh, green um, uh, uh, green energy. This is uh, with a bond from, we have a bond uh, 
within it uh, from World Bank and we are able to contribute, we are able to uh, lure these investments uh, in Egypt. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Vanya, for a Minister of International Cooperation. Uh, so talking about uh, different uh, fields and sectors and international fund, uh, funding uh, directives, so UN is a partner uh, and a great witness uh, um, in this framework. In this, I'd like to host uh, Mr. Alexandro Fracassetti from uh, uh, the UN Water Fund. Uh, welcome, Mr. Alessandro. Welcome, Mr. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, the importance uh, for this uh, annual meeting, uh, which held here in, in uh, Sharm el-Sheikh in, in Egypt. Uh, what can it provide uh, uh, for economic-wise uh, for uh, the African uh, countries? I'd like to ask about the importance uh, of this meeting and what can it provide uh, for African countries, uh, uh, including Egypt. An important uh, event once more here in Sharm el Sheikh. Don't forget, we had uh, the African Development Bank annual meeting uh, just in May. Last year, we had the Islamic Development Bank annual meeting, then we had COP27. So I think events like this are really showcasing Egypt and Sharm el Sheikh as a really global hub for uh, uh, important international events. Uh, so, uh, talking about the importance is being held uh, in uh, these meetings in Sharm el Sheikh, and we can't forget that last May we have uh, the governors of central bank, uh, African uh, banks uh, for African uh, and African uh, continents and Islamic uh, uh, banks uh, last year and COP27, which has a significant uh, importance around it. More uh, than for the importance. Yeah, so I think in this specific case, what we are looking at is again another opportunity to discuss sustainable financing, which is very important to, uh, in these days, uh, and financing for sustainability as well. What we really need to realize is that uh, uh, with economic growth, we really need to be very careful that this is sustainable, that we take care of our environment, uh, and opportunities like this is also a great yes. opportunity for the private sector yes. to be able to uh, discuss potential investments uh, that are good for Egypt. Uh, yes, okay. Thank you, Mr. Alessandro, because uh, the president, uh, we are uh, uh, preparing for... Uh, uh, he's uh, coming now, uh, holding uh, this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Alessandro. Uh, uh, Sayyid uh, Alessandro We have Mr. Alexander talking about sustainable development and its importance and private sector role and what is related on the issues, environmental issues. So actually what I said is President Sisi is about to enter the hall and it's about to host uh, President Sisi to inaugurate uh, this important conference uh, that is being held for the first time in Africa, the AIIIP uh, conference. So I greet you and uh, hopefully this uh, conference will be beneficial for Egypt and for African content and has um, great uh, impact uh, and promising impact uh, on our economy and we are waiting for uh, President Sisi's entrance. Uh, my
جود مورنينج اهلا وسهلا تفضلوا والسادة الحضور اهلا بكم في الاجتماع السنوي للبنك الاسيوي للاستثمار في البنية التحتية 2023 اكسلنسيز ديستنجوشد جيستس ليديز اند جنتلمان Welcome to the 2023 Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank annual meeting. Your Excellency, Mr. Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, President of the Arab Republic of Egypt, Mr. Jin Li Chun, President of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, Governors, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends around the world. My name is Ludger Schuknecht, and as Vice President and Corporate Secretary of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and Secretary of the Board of Governments, Governors, it is my privilege to warmly welcome you to the opening ceremony of the eighth annual meeting of the Board of Governors of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. We are honored to be joined today by His Excellency Mr. Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, President of the Arab Republic of Egypt. I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of AIIB to express our deep gratitude to him and to the government of Egypt as the host of our annual meeting this year. We are most grateful for the generous hospitality and unwavering spirit of partnership that the government and people of Egypt have demonstrated in hosting AIIB's first physical annual meeting since 2019. During today's opening ceremony, we will hear addresses from a number of highly distinguished speakers. Then we will move to a panel discussion on mobilizing private capital for infrastructure investment. We are honored that His Excellency Mr. Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, President of the Arab Republic of Egypt, will respond to the panel discussion with his own remarks. Before we hear from our first speaker, I would like to invite you to watch a short video on AIIB. Humankind has always faced challenges. But those who work together, those who think differently, are those who can overcome anything, providing the answers no matter how difficult the challenge. Today, our challenges have never been more frightening. They threaten our world. They threaten our children's world. But though our challenges may seem insurmountable, by working together, we are a formidable force. Where there was danger, we're creating a safer world. We're providing safe water and sanitation for millions of people. Where there was isolation, we're bringing people together. Together with our partners, we're connecting people to a whole world of possibilities. Where old ways aren't working, we're bringing new. We've created one of the world's largest solar resources, providing cleaner, greener energy for this generation and the next. And together, we can do more much more. Working with our clients, we can overcome the challenges that threaten our future. Working together to provide the infrastructure for tomorrow, we will create a world where our children will thrive.
It's because we all share that vision that we are gathered here in Sharm El Sheikh for the 2023 annual meeting. Our first ever in Africa with our friend, founding member and host, the government of Egypt. We are creating a platform for a deeper exchange, for cooperation and collaboration, to drive sustainable growth in a challenging world and provide the sustainable infrastructure for tomorrow. It now gives me great pleasure to invite Mr. Jin Li Chuen, President and Chair of the Board of Directors of AIB, to give the opening address. Your Excellency, President Abdel Fattah El Sisi of the Arab Republic of Egypt. Your Excellency, Prime Minister Mostaf Medabole. Your Excellency, Dr. Mohammed Maid, Chair of the AIIB Board of Governors and Minister of Finance Egypt. Distinguished Governors, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor and uh, privilege to welcome you all to the eighth annual meeting of the Board of Governors of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. On behalf of us all at AIIB, I extend our deepest appreciation to the Arab Republic of Egypt and the Egyptian people for such gracious hospitality and a superb support during the annual meeting located at the Nexus of Asia and Africa. As one of the greatest civilization of human society, human history, Egyptian infrastructure has long occupied a specified place in the world's imagination. From the truly timeless marvel of the Pyramid of Giza to the Suez Canal through which 12% of global trade flows, Egypt has long been a home for grand visions and dreams of a new tomorrow. Indeed, the new Swiss Canal project implemented in record time thanks to the keen attention of President El Sisi exemplifies the transformative impact of well-planned and executed infrastructure projects. The development of infrastructure investments and new administrative capital is all too palpable. Distinguished governors, our post-pandemic world faces a litany of economic challenges. Growth projections are being downgraded. Inflation and interest rates are at decades high level. And in the wake of COVID-19, public budgets are more strained than ever. Yet, the world continues to grow. The infrastructure financing gap continues to be yawned for ever larger. There is an uh, ever-growing need to support members as they grapple with the ever more frequent natural disasters. Uh, we see uh, some of the recent tragedies in Morocco and Libya. And most importantly, the clear and present danger of climate change menaces us all. Expectations of MDBs have never been greater. We must do more and dramatically so. If multilateralism is the melody of global cooperation, then this annual meeting is but one chorus 
in a never-ending refrain towards a more prosperous tomorrow. Some 45 years ago, Egypt's visionary president Anwar Sadat wrote in his memoir, "There can be hope only. There can be hope only for a society which acts as one big family, not as many separate ones." This is the essence of the multilateral ethos that shaped AWB's formation in 2016. I'm proud to say that today, eight years into operation, AWB has been recognized as an integrated component of the global financial system. AWB remains in the gene pool of multilateral demand banks. With the special features of a multilateral demand bank fit for the 21st century, our bank is working closely with our sister institutions to strengthen the family bonds that bind all MDBs together. We are effectively contributing to MDB reform, including by implementing the G20 CAF view recommendations. While also establishing new initiatives within esteemed partners at breakneck speed, our bank's recent joint announcement with the World Bank of a U.S. dollar, one billion U.S. dollars guarantees ever a selection of their sovereign portfolios is one such example of our quick and collaborative cooperation to strengthen the performance. Of the MDB system, we are also proud of our、uh, financing record at the, as the largest co-financing partner of both the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank, along with our close co-financing partnerships with the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development and the European Investment Bank. Such cooperation exemplifies AIB's DNA-coded commitment to partnership in addressing development challenges. Over the last year, we announced agreement with many esteemed partners, including AFB, AFD, KFW, Bloomberg Philanthropies, the Pandemic Fund, the Global Energy Alliance for People and Planet. The Energy Transition Accelerator financing platform, and with COP28 presidency. In addition to our multilateral and development partners, our bank's capital market partners have been crucial to scaling up our efforts to support our clients. Three weeks ago, our bank achieved early completion. Of our 2023 funding program, with a successful issuance of two billion dollars of three-year global bond, with 4.8 billion dollars in orders, this bond recorded the largest order book for any bond issued by our bank since its inception. It testifies to the broad confidence of investors in the bank and in our. Commitment to financing infrastructure for tomorrow. Furthermore, in May this year, our bank issued Asia's first ever climate adaptation bond, marking a significant milestone in adaptation financing. Today, I'm delighted to announce the launch of our climate action plan. The plan outlines our ambition. To bring capital, capacity, and uh, uh, ever、uh, convening power to help our members in their efforts to address climate change, we will elaborate further on our climate action plan in our climate flagship seminar later today. This plan builds on what is already. A significant area of focus for our bank. On July the first, we fulfilled our promise to align all new financing with the Paris Agreement. Furthermore, we have already attained the goal of annual climate financing of 50% or above 
uh, of the uh, total approvals by 2025, with climate financing accounting for 56% of annual financing in 2020. President El Sisi, in the same beautiful city of peaceful, almost the same beautiful city of peace almost one year ago, eight year, uh, one year ago, you spoke of the sobering mission as you opened the COP27 to the world. Your prescient words, your prescient words hold true today. That future generation must not bear the consequences of mistakes that they did not make themselves. That now is the time for action and implementation. That trust lies at the heart of ability to act as one. If our global village is to withstand the storms brewing on our horizon, it will be due in no small part to the actions of everyone here today. AIIB is acting. We are acting in concert with our MDB peers and other trusted development partners, united by our shared pursuit for a better tomorrow. I wish you all a successful assembly over the next few days and invite you to explore new opportunities for partnerships as we work together to invest in the green infrastructure for tomorrow. Thank you all very much for your participation. Thank you. Thank you, President, for your inspiring leadership of this bank. I'm now delighted to invite Her Excellency Dr. Srimulyani Indravati, AIB Governor and Minister of Finance of the Republic of Indonesia, to give her address. Thank you so much. His Excellency, President Abdel Fattah El Sisi, President of the Egypt, Mr. Jin Lin Kung, the AIIB President, His Excellency, Prime Minister of Egypt, as well as my colleague, Dr. Mohamed Maid, Minister of Finance, His Excellency, Mr. Marco Primorak, Minister of Finance of the Republic of Korea, Fellow governors, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to all of you. First, I would like to thank His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi for the hospitality and also holding this very important meeting in this beautiful country, Egypt. I am delighted to be joining the 23rd annual meeting in Sham El Sheikh, Egypt. This is my third time, it's actually within 12 months in these countries. I'm very proud to see the growth of the AIIB in its eight years of operation. The members have grown rapidly to reach 106 members while also having its portfolio grows progressively amid the crisis caused by pandemic and the recent economic turbulence, including energy and food crisis. I appreciate AIIB for its continued support to all member countries, including Indonesia, and becoming our strategic partners in infrastructure development. As we are all noticed, that the current global economic situation is creating a big challenges for many countries. The rising geopolitical fragmentation 
and higher interest rate have led to a super, super economic growth as well as increasing debt vulnerability for most countries, especially and most importantly, the client country of AIIB. The projection of the growth this year is going to be much lower to only 2.9% in 2023, comparing last year of 4.1%. Many developing countries, including emerging countries, need substantial resources to address post-pandemic situation and recovery, while also maintaining their commitment to climate change. Developing countries definitely require extra support and huge financial from both advanced country and multilateral development banks as well as private sector. Therefore, I urge all the advanced country and multilateral development banks, including AIIB, to be able to realize their funding commitment with the more affordability and concessionality for many member countries which are facing both economic and financial situation. Certainly, all client countries also need to do their own homework. In addition, I also strongly support AIIB's commitment to target 50% of its portfolio for climate financing to support member countries in achieving their climate target. This is a huge ambition. In line with global climate agenda toward net zero emission, Indonesia has created energy transition mechanism country platform, which was announced during the G20 presidency last year, in order for us to be able to increase renewable energy development and accelerate energy transition. There is no development without the need for more energy. But we also very aware that the energy should emit less carbon. So for all of us, it is not about recognition of this challenge, but how we are going to be able to address by providing the right blended finance, especially under current very high for longer interest rate. Indonesia using the platform, including currently as a chairman of ASEAN, led and established the ASEAN taxonomy version two that are more compatible and interoperable globally. This is necessary condition for the private sector participation on the financing of the climate agenda. These are all the steps which we are looking forward to share with you, but also with the AIIB to come up with a solution. As the financial institu institution that is operate with cleaner, greener, and leaner, AIIB is now tested to demonstrate its commitment. I am happy to note that AIIB is having ample room to serve its member countries. With that capacity, I believe AIIB could play a more significant role to its target that is infrastructure for tomorrow. I do hope and continue supporting AIIB as part of the global solution. I will stop here. I wish you all a very successful meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you, Governor. I am now honored to invite His Excellency Mr. Marco Primorak, AIB Governor and Minister of Finance in the Republic of Croatia, to give his address. 
Governor, please. Your Excellency, Mr. President El Sisi, Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. Minister of Finance, Mr. President Jin, dear heads of delegations, members of delegations, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure for me to have the opportunity to speak to you at the opening ceremony of the eighth annual meeting of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. This occasion is even more special since it is the first time for Croatia, an AIIB full member as of the 8th end of 2021, to participate in the bank's annual meetings. Allow me also to express our gratitude to the host country, the Arab Republic of Egypt, also one of the founding members of the AIIB for its warm hospitality and all the efforts to make this event a success. Thank you very much. AIIB is a multilateral development bank with sustainability at its core. As a full member of the multilateral community, it makes an active contribution to joint multilateral efforts to solve some of the greatest challenges the world is facing today. Supporting and achieving the climate agenda certainly falls in this category as one of the toughest challenges. Therefore, the AIIB's activity in that direction represents an important role to play. After many climate-related crises and disasters we have witnessed over the past few months and years, we very much welcome the launch of the AIIB's Climate Action Plan as announced by President Jin in his speech earlier today. This is a clear demonstration that AIIB is deeply committed to furthering the global climate agenda and supporting its members in mitigating and adapting to the impacts of the climate change. In this context, over the coming years, we encourage the bank to set an ambitious business plan focusing on supporting the green transition primarily across its regional members, including by accelerating private capital mobilization in that respect, thus contributing to stronger achievement of both targets as set by the 2021 to 2030 corporate strategy. The efficient use of the AIIB capital and the application of international best practices is, however, a prerequisite for effective contribution to sustainable development across the region and beyond. Nevertheless, we believe that a bank possesses adequate strength to proactively reach out and engage deeper in regional economies, especially those that rank as the most vulnerable. As witnessed recently by the record demand for AIIB sustainable bonds, there is also a clear indication of the institutional investors' interest to support the bank in exercising its sustainable economic development mandate. This momentum should be seized. Over the last couple of years, AIIB has attracted quite a number of non-regional members, thus strengthening international partnership and hence the global security, stability, but also prosperity. Driven by multilateralism, many opportunities have been opened for the non-regional membership quota to exchange experiences with the propulsive Asian markets, as well as to boost creation of the new skills on both sides. In this part of the world that connects three continents, Asia, Africa, and Europe, through the sea, AIIB supported projects in its founding member, the Arab Republic of Egypt, are an example of cooperation towards economic development, wealth, 
and improvement of infrastructure connectivity, as well as the global climate agenda. Building on the foundation set under the leadership of President Jin over the last eight years, I'm confident that the AIIB will keep delivering on its mandate efficiently, pushing the limits of the region towards sustainable growth in this challenging world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. For our final speech, it is my privilege to invite the Chair of AIB's Board of Governors, His Excellency Dr. Mohamed Maid, Minister of Finance of the Arab Republic of Egypt, to give his remarks. Governor, Chair, please. Mr. Sadr Rais Jumhuriya, Sadr Rais Abfattah Sisi, Sadr Rais Al Bank Al Asiawi Al Sismar Fi Al Baniya Al Tahtiya, Sayyid Jin, Sadr Muhafiz Al Bank Al Asiawi Al Sismar Fi Al Baniya Al Tahtiya, Diyuf Masr Al Karam, Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. Mr. Hal, I want to welcome you all to the city of Sharm Al Sheikh on the city of Sharm Al Sheikh. والتي تعتبر جسرا يربط بين قارتي أفريقيا وآسيا وأوروبا من خلال قناة السويس تعتبر مدينة سلام ملتقى وقيادات وأصدقاء وشركاء جمهورية مصر العربية واجتمعنا اليوم هنا في مدينة شرم الشيخ لما هو التأكيد على دور مصر اليادي على الساحتين الدولية والإقليمية من خلال عقد العديد من الأحداث أبرزت أهمية الدور المحوالي الذي تلعبه مصر showing the importance of deepening international cooperation among Egypt between countries and all the, uh, the roles Egypt plays in sustainable development which is considered important, important for all the world to stand together in achieving it. And uh, um, not more evident is uh, uh, then Egypt host for COP27, Egypt uh, uh, supports sustainable uh, development and Egypt hosts والتي تضع أيضا قدما في القارة الأسيوية أو شبه جزيرة سيناء لاجتماعات البنك الأسيوي للسيسمار في البنية التحتية AEIB meetings reiterating this approach that Egypt, that the leaders chose, asserting our role at regional and international level, enhancing cooperation within. Especially within the crisis or challenges we're facing, this this edition of AIIB meeting for the first time in Egypt, within a great challenge, different challenges in the world because of the repercussions of COVID, which is the non the, the interruption of physical meetings since September 2019. In addition to an impact, all societal and community impact with the impact of the economy, especially the developed and emerging economies which limited their capabilities to face limitations. Which is the climate, uh, on the climate change, has an impact on the climate change. 
witnessed many disruptions as hurricane and floods in Morocco and the Middle East from this meeting in Egypt. Is in a time we have more we more communication across board, which is one of the most important axes in AI. IB, as a, as a being multilateral bank uh, aiming at deepening international and regional cooperation, achieving sustainable development, and, and facing all international and regional challenges, and focusing investment in. Um, and, and in infrastructure and building access for member states for the vision as uh, Egypt's uh, as the bank's uh, vision is aligned with the Egypt's vision, which is uh, especially Vision 23, which made Egypt uh, one of the uh, first uh, contributors in establishing this bank, which, uh, and Egypt has important roles, uh, role in uh, um, the uh, operation and mechanism of the bank. Uh, Egypt uh, um, worked uh, with 106 member states to work uh, on the core access, uh, among which uh, in, uh, infrastructure supported uh, uh, support and increasing its role in development. Uh, this is uh, one of the most opportunities of Egypt governments and uh, the path of uh, economic reform to put uh, a certain uh, path uh, for supporting environment witnessed uh, by a uh, preparatory um, meeting held in a new governorate with the representatives of the private with AIB to explore supporting cooperate, uh, cooperation uh, means between the sector and the bank, uh, which can expand and deepen with the existence of this international institution that uh, expand to all uh, continents uh, to become the second biggest Bank, multilateral bank uh, uh, from, uh, in regards to member states. Um, we also uh, uh, we aspire to expand our cooperation in different sectors uh, on top of which uh, increasing partnerships, uh, per, um, participation of private sector and uh, by um, increasing uh, projects uh, between private and public sector and uh, focusing on digital transformation and green transformation and investing in digital uh, infrastructure. In this regard, uh, the board of the bank uh, succeeded in funding uh, developmental and sustainable uh, development that uh, benefited all members uh, as it uh, reached uh, 20, 232 projects uh, covering many fields um, uh, worth of 44 billion dollars in 55 countries across the world. Uh, however, we still have lots uh, we can provide, uh, provide to fulfill uh, sustainable economic development uh, in uh, all member states. Uh, across the continent, especially what we are looking for in our Africa. In Africa, our distinguished AIB is a, an important and effective contributor in investments uh, as uh, the port, uh, Egypt portfolio, uh, portfolio uh, worth of $113 billion with the opportunity of more investments of more than $1 billion in different sectors depending on private sectors and implementing these products to uh, uh, to uh, deepen the role of infrastructures, especially in fulfilling uh, economic sustainability, that uh, which is the government is doing in supporting and improving environment of investment in Egypt, which it agrees with what the government is focusing on, with the pivotal role private most, uh, private sector in um, in uh, the investment which uh, meets the needs of uh, its citizens to build uh, uh, to build fund, uh, infrastructure against uh, facing against the challenges ladies and gentlemen we believe that overpassing this uh, uh, difficult phase uh, that word uh, word is uh, going through needs all the involvement of all uh, parties including AIB to ensure sustainable um, continuity of 
of investments in Africa and all countries that, especially Africa, that uh, suffered from ignorance uh, from the current uh, financial system. So, uh, in, we see that investment in infrastructure is an can be an opportunity to. Uh, so fulfill uh, the capacity uh, of uh, Egypt uh, with other parties uh, as uh, other institutions, uh, regional and, inter and multilateral institutions, uh, emerging econ and developed uh, economies uh, providing provide uh, uh, required materials with concessional loans aligned with their goals. That's why the AIB members states uh, work uh, to provide uh, the means of bank to provide a more uh, equitable, sustainable economy in all uh, countries and also contributing in the uh, new, um, new architecture world system that we are all, all looking forward to build. We are uh, reiterating our solidarity to um, to overpass uh, through uh, overpass uh, this uh, phase, so that's why we hope uh, to uh, achieve what we're looking for, which is providing more positive and equivalent environment uh, among all sectors in order to achieve the cornerstones of sustainable uh, and green uh, development at uh, the national and regional level and mobilize the capital in the private investments and open horizons in developing and and infrastructure and encouraging investments, uh, foreign investments with the partner uh, participation of the private sector that lure uh, more prioritized investments, uh, which is uh, um, which uh, uh, in, uh, contributes in uh, improving uh, people's lives. At the uh, conclusion, I wish you uh, uh, more um, constructive dialogues and discussions. Help us uh, um, that help us. Uh, in having more sustainable uh, development award and peace be upon all of you. Thank you very much, His Excellency and Chair Minister Maid. Egypt's support for AIB as an institution that operates with high standards and strong multilateral governance is deeply appreciated as is your encouragement for our future growth and development. In a moment, there will be a high-level panel discussion exploring the importance of private capital mobilization in bridging the infrastructure investment gap and what multilateral development banks such as AIB can do to facilitate this. But before we begin, I would like to invite you to watch a video on AIB's collaboration with Egypt. على خريطة العالم بتفصلنا حدود ومسافات لكن بيجمعنا نفس الطموح وبتواجهنا نفس التحديات التغير المناخي الزيادة السكانية وغيرها لكن التحدي الأهم والأكبر هو توفير الموارد واستغلالها بشكل يساعد على تنمية الإنسان ويحافظ على البيئة للأجيال اللي جاية والآن التحدي كبير كانت الفكرة في ديسمبر 2015 يشهد الاقتصاد العالمي لحظة تحول بعد إعلان الصين بمشاركة 57 دولة تأسيس البنك الأسيوي للاستثمار في البنية التحتية واللي بيهدف لدعم الحكومات لتأسيس بنية تحتية خضراء مدعومة بالتكنولوجيا الحديثة AIIB plays a significant role in multilateral development with our high standard projects and modern governance We finance infrastructure for tomorrow with a strong emphasis on mastering climate change and mobilizing private capital.